and welcome to Encompass Live. Um, this week, I am Krista Burns, your host. Um, this is Nebraska Library Commission's weekly online event, uh, Encompass Live. We cover all sorts of NLC activities and library topics presented by NLC staff and some guest speakers we've been bringing in. These um, one-hour sessions are free, and they are done every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. They are recorded, so you can um, listen to them and watch them after the fact. We can't attend a live session. Um, we do a mixture of things, presentations, interviews, book reviews, web tours, Q&A sessions, anything we can think of that might be of interest to Nebraska, the Nebraska library community. And this morning, we are going to do a session on um, accreditation and certification. Uh, Richard Miller, bleh, Richard Miller, <laughs> and Laura Johnson will be going through that today. So I will go ahead and pass over on to them. I'm not sure who started. I'll start. Okay. <laughs> I'll start. I'm going to begin. This is Richard Miller. Glad to see you or hear you this morning. And uh, I, I did want to give you a clue, first of all, about uh, sometimes people confuse accreditation with certification. And one of the ways that I've learned to remember that is that accreditation has to do with institutions or libraries, and certification has to do with people. It's tipping. So we're going to talk about library uh, accreditation, but then we're also going to talk about librarian certification and library board certification. So it's people for certification, it's institutions for accreditation. You can flip over a couple of slides. This is a slide that Laura found of a non-library library, but it certainly looks like a library. And you can flip to the next one as well. <coughs> so why do we have public library accreditation in our state? Well, you can see there, and I'm not going to read the slide to you, that it is meant to improve services. It started some time ago, and it does give libraries a set of guidelines from which to do things. I'm going to read from the introduction to the guidelines for public library accreditation, just several of the sentences there. It says in those guidelines, in the introduction, Nebraskans deserve and expect high quality service from their public libraries. The purpose of statewide guidelines is to establish a consistent level of basic library and information service that can be expected to be available in every public library across the state. And later it says, the topics addressed in our accreditation process include governance, service, and resources of public libraries. The anticipated outcome is that Nebraska citizens will have access to accurate, high-quality library and information services from public libraries that meet statewide guidelines. And then a bit later in the guidelines, under the purpose statement, there are a couple more sentences I'd like to read to you. It says, the guidelines for accreditation should serve as a tool for measuring and encouraging growth and development of library and information services offered in Nebraska public libraries. The outcome should be the availability of those services for Nebraska citizens served by accredited libraries. And the next slide. So why should libraries be accredited? Well, you can see there that there are a number of reasons for it. I'm going to start with the second one. You are eligible. Your library becomes eligible for state aid to public libraries. You're eligible to apply for three different grant programs that we have here at the Commission, Youth Grants for Excellence, Continuing Education Grants, and Library Improvement Grants, which in the past were called LSTA grants. And you are eligible to apply for other federal grants, such as the Community Development Block Grants or the USDA Grants and Loans. Those last two that I mentioned here, a number of public libraries have received for their public library building programs. And quite honestly, a better reason probably to, uh, for your library to be accredited is to demonstrate to local officials and to your customers that you have met a certain level of excellence in your community. Go to the next slide. In fact, go two slides. <laughs> Now, to be accredited, each year around mid-July, we send letters out to all unaccredited public libraries 
and to about a third of accredited public libraries that are up for reaccreditation. And the reason we do that is so that we don't have everybody coming up the same third year. We kind of split those up a bit. <clears throat> Accreditation itself runs a three-year period that goes October 1st through September 30th for that three-year period. I do have to warn you, however, that if during a three-year period the Commission learns of a situation of some substantial change in the library situation that affects one or more of the guidelines or the level of accreditation, the Commission can review and revoke or revise a library's accreditation standing or place a library on probation, its accreditation on probation, until that deficiency is rectified. Basically, what we're saying is that if you have a situation that changes significantly within that three-year period, the expectation is that you will maintain that level of accreditation, that phase of accreditation throughout those three years. If you can't do that, you should really let us know because we need to look at that. And the next slide. Here's a slide of what the guidelines look like on the first page, and Laura has put on these slides the, uh, uh, the link, and uh, Krista has put these links in our delicious account at the Commission, so you can find them for this presentation after this presentation. You don't need to try to, try to scribble those down at this point. And the next slide. There are three different levels or phases of accreditation, depending on whom you speak to. There's an essential level, an enhanced level, and an excellent level. And the essential level is the beginning level. We used to, under the old uh, guidelines, had a kind of a beginning and advanced. We had two levels, but now we have three levels. And I think it uh, provides for more opportunities for libraries. Under the essential level, there are 26 guidelines listed. And in order to be accredited at the essential level, the public library has to meet all 26 of those guidelines. If the library has, uh, wants to be at the enhanced level, it has to be all of the essential guidelines, those 26, plus 18 of the 22 guidelines listed under the enhanced level. And if the library wants to be at the excellent level, it has to meet all 26 on the essential level, all 22 of the enhanced level, and 14 of the 16 at the uh, at the excellent level in order to be accredited. State aid is awarded at higher levels for the enhanced level and for the excellent level of accreditation. So that's another good reason to work uh, toward a, a more advanced uh, accreditation. Each of the phases of levels of accreditation have the following groupings of guidelines. There's governance, funding, and administration, services and facilities, personnel, collection, technology, and public relations. There are some things that are required by the accreditation guidelines no matter what level the library is, and I'll just mention a few of them. It must have a certified library board, and we'll be talking about certified library boards later in this presentation. It must have a mission statement, it must annually submit its statistics via the Bibliostat Collect or whatever other tool we happen to be using. It has to have a library telephone. It has to have paid library staff. It must have a certified director, and it must offer free internet for its patrons. Let me flip that over. Next slide. Now, once a library is accredited or re-accredited, it does receive a certificate like the one you see here. And that certificate is signed by Commission Director Rod Wagner. And you'll notice near the bottom of that certificate, it indicates which level of accreditation the library has attained. That is good for three years. And... Um, I don't think there's anything more to say about that, but you can keep that up there. Uh, before I finish, I, I want to stress the importance of as many libraries as possible submitting their annual statistics. We have public libraries that are unaccredited, but which send in their statistics to us annually and do receive a $250 uh, amount of money under dollars for data. And that helps us with getting a more accurate picture 
of public libraries in our state and where they are, statistically speaking. So I would like to, uh, to encourage you to do that, uh, just to give you some idea, I and mean, we're not going into detail on these accreditation guidelines, but just to give you some idea about it, in terms of the amount of local support, either the total amount of their per capita support, if a library is accredited at the essential level, it has to meet a 65% of the average of other libraries within its size group in order to be accredited at the essential level. Now that shouldn't be difficult to do because really you're, you're at the D level of, uh, of your income. So if, I, if a library says that it's difficult for them to meet that, you can tell your local funding officials that you're at only 65% of the average level of other libraries within your, within your size range. If the library wants to be at the enhanced level, that library has to meet at least 85% of the average income of other public libraries within its uh, size group. And if the library wants to be at the excellent level, that's when you're really exceeding other libraries because you have to be at 105% of other libraries within your size group in terms of local income or per capita income. And the last slide. We put these mug shots in here because we weren't sure if we'd be <laughs> live. I assure you I don't always look so grim. I sometimes smile. Um, and uh, that is the end, unless you folks have questions about library accreditation before we move on to public library certification. Questions, I guess we'll move it off. Nothing else? Yes, please. Yes. Down there. Oh. Down here. Yep. Yeah, they go down because of the feet. Go ahead. Now we'll talk about librarian certification. This is Athena who's standing on a big big book. So this was a good uh, this this was a good uh, picture for librarians, I thought. Um, goddesses as they are. Yes. <laughs> as we all know we are goddesses. Um, librarian really helps us to assure good service to library users and that's the big thing. Um, it gives librarians the opportunity to keep up and to learn. Um, certification is not really a matter of earning the credential. It's a matter of gaining the learning. Um, it's meant to, the program is meant to help you get the time to carve out the time to tell someone else, yes, I, I need to have this time to um, go out and learn and uh, network with other people. So we really mean for it to be a help to you. Um, it is a requirement for accreditation that you are certified. Um, and at the various levels, um, you'll need more of your staff certified. Uh, at the essential level, you'll only need your director certified. But um, as you go into enhanced and excellent, you'll need more people in your, on your staff certified. Mm -hmm. um, hmm? Librarianship is really A learning profession. We don't ever stop learning. Um, so many new things come along. Um, we've just done the 23 things, and I think everybody was so thrilled. But there, there were 23 things in six weeks that we all learned that were new. So uh, we do have to keep up. Um, the big deal with this program, it is voluntary. Um, 
and all you have to do is sign up. It doesn't cost anything. Um, the application form uh, simply asks for your email address, your mailing address, and your level of education because there are levels of certification. Um, what will happen is we'll send you a certificate. We'll enter you into our database and we'll keep track of your um, of the CE um, credits that you've earned and we'll give you a password so you can check your record on t online anytime you want to. Um, this is the uh, application again and I suggest really that you go to the um, front page of the Nebraska Library Commission's website and just search on librarian certification application. Uh, when I did that this morning, it came up the second thing in the list, so you shouldn't have any trouble finding it. Um, this is the certificate, uh, suitable for framing. Um, they're good for three years, and uh, we love to we love to send them to people. So. Um, so how does all this really work? Well, you go, um, you participate in activities, and if an activity is sponsored by the Nebraska uh, Library Commission or by a regional library system, they will let us know uh, who all attended. They'll send us basically a copy of the sign-in sheet. But if you um, attend other workshops or you uh, go to one of the web junction webinars or you um, recordings, of this. recordings of this I mean there's just lots of ways to earn credits um, you need to let us know you've done it we have no way of knowing unless you, unless you let us know so we have put a, um, a form on the web again and if you go and search on CE activity report it should come up um, and we just want to know um, who you are, what you attended, when it was, because we, we like to we like to enter things in the database. An event we enter one time, and then we enter all the people who attended that event. So we need to know when the event was, so that we get the event. You don't really want to know all this, do you? <laughs> um, but we need to know the particulars of it. Um, we just need to know what the program was about. How does it relate to your job? Um, we're pretty broad-minded about what relates to librarianship because it's a pretty broad field. Um, I always tell people that your violin lessons and your Tai Chi won't count. <laughs> Um, but really, um, if you need to learn to use Excel spreadsheet because you use those in your job, well then, that, that's a, a continuing education for you. If you need, um, and I would think almost anyone would need, um, CPR, that counts because we would really like you to save lives if you can. So, um... And if you have a question about whether an activity would count, give me a call, and I'll um, we can go over the guidelines and see if we think it would um, be suitable for um, uh, a CE activity. Um, we need to know what time the what time the activity started and what time it ended because that's kind of how the number of um, points is determined. And you need to let us know within 90 days. Uh, we do find people who sometimes let it go and then they don't remember exactly when it was or who the speaker was or something. And so it's just really better if you let us know right away. So we're gonna ask that you do this within 90 days. In fact, we're gonna insist that you do it within 90 days. Um, then you also, you can check your record anytime online. Um, you will have a password 
and you just go to the CE record review, again, something you can search on the NLC homepage, and uh, it will come up. You just enter your name, your password, and you will see um, what is on your record. Um, passwords are combinations of letters, numbers, and symbols, and they're case sensitive. In other words, they're awful to read over the telephone. <laughs> so if you uh, have trouble with your password, there is a password lookup on this. Um, and if you want us to help you with your password, we'd be happy to, but send us a little email. Um, because we want to email it back to you so you can just cut and paste it into the box rather than having to uh, read it aloud. Um, we do keep your record confidential. Uh, you, of course, are free to share it with anyone. Um, and we recognize that your library, your library board, um, the people that run your library certainly have a vested interest in uh, your continuing education, your professional development, but um, this is your professional development, so we won't share it with people. Um, so how does all this really work exactly? Well, you need to fulfill the basic skills requirements first. When you first sign up um, to be in the certification program, you'll get what is essentially a um, a, a certificate for three years and during that first three year period you'll need unless you have already completed formal education in library science you will need to fulfill the basic skills requirements we do offer the basic skills classes which would fulfill those requirements but you can do it by taking courses at the community college or uh, other college courses uh, and then you need to participate in library-related continuing ed education activities so that at the end of the three-year period, you have earned 45 continuing education credits. That does seem like a lot until you think, oh, well, that was three years. That was only 15 a year. And if I went to a couple of CLIP meetings and the summer reading program workshop, that's it. I've, I've earned the CE credits. So some people find that they have to be um, very selective in what they attend because there are so many things out there to attend. Um, then you need to, unless the activity was sponsored by the Nebraska Library Commission or a regional system, you need to report your attendance within 90 days. Um, anytime you look at your record, if there's something that you don't understand or uh, if there's a problem with uh, your attendance of something, let us know. Just give me a call or give, you know, send me an email and let me know there's a problem. If um, at the end of the three-year period or you, you know that your renewal is coming up and you haven't earned your 45 CE uh, credits, well, things happen sometimes. And I appreciate that. And if you need an extension because you broke your leg or you had to plan your daughter's wedding or you were taking your mother-in-law to chemotherapy, we understand that. Um, and we can give you a little bit more time. On the other hand, we will be quite as understanding if you didn't do it just because you didn't do it. Um, but we would like to encourage you to keep up and to kind of pace yourself so that you don't have a lot of credits to earn at the end of a, a period. Um, if, however, there's a problem, let me know. We'll work it out. We'll figure out something so that you can earn the credits you need and get your certification renewed. Renewal is automatic at the end of the three-year period. Uh, if you have the 45 CE credits, we'll send you a new certificate and you're good for another three years. Um, at the end of three years, when you've gotten a new certificate, we sort of set the clock back to zero and you have to earn 45 more credits in the next three year period as well. There are no fees. There's never any charge for any of this. Um, 
We did talk a little about the basic skills requirements. I just want to go through them really fast. We need training in four areas, really, which is public service, directly helping the public, collection development, which of course is helping the public, but in a kind of an indirect way as you uh, purchase materials for your library. Organization of materials, which is uh, how to catalog and make your materials accessible to the public. Again, really public service, but in an indirect way. And public library administration, which is all those things that you have to do, um, reporting your statistics and um, probably uh, scraping the chewing gum off the sidewalk <laughs> and a whole lot of things as well. But those are the basic skills requirements and we do teach classes, but there are other ways that you can get those, uh, you fulfill those requirements as well. And that's it in a nutshell. Um, if you do have questions, please let us know. Um, we're happy to talk with you about it and um, we hope we'll see you at some workshops. Thanks a lot. Back to you. Anybody have any questions right now for Laura? All right, we'll move along. There'll be plenty of time to ask other questions too. And now, Laura, in keeping with the, the gods and goddesses, Laura put together a typical looking library board in Nebraska here, just for your information. I think actually these are Greek gods and goddesses, but I guess that's what boards have to aspire to anyway, probably. Well, these are all gods. These aren't goddesses. I don't see any goddesses on there. I guess they're all gods. And we'll go to the next one. This might be a more typical library board, although they're cartoon characters. But uh, I did want to read you just a little bit from the Public Library Board certification slide that, <clears throat> that you'll see um, after this. It does say the Public Library Board certification program is designed to help improve your library, increase board involvement, fulfill library accreditation requirements, and organize continuing education activities for board members. I think what you're seeing here is <clears throat> that both these accreditation and the types of certification that we're doing are all tied together with the accreditation guidelines, with state aid, with all the other things. They're kind of, they all mesh together in some ways. Um, so why do we, uh, why do we then have library board certification in Nebraska? I read you those sections already, but why does the library community feel it should be a requirement of the accreditation guidelines? Well, by law, most of our library boards in our state are governing or administrative boards. And even though in first-class cities, first-class cities have the option of having advisory boards, most of our first-class cities have governing or administrative boards. So it's very important that they be knowledgeable about what it is they need to be doing. And that's why we have library board certification. Now, Laura said that getting 45 hours of CE within three years is really pretty easy. For boards, we just require that they get 20 hours of CE within three years. So that should be really easy. And yet we do have situations where boards do say that they have difficulty, you can flip over the next one, have difficulty earning those. And we're gonna give you some ideas here <clears throat> and the next one as well. Uh, we're going to give you some idea of how you could earn some of those hours, how your board could earn some of those hours. <clears throat> they could attend workshops. They could view library-related videotapes. And in fact, we just updated our list of videotapes that is of use to librarians and library board members. And in fact, unlike... Li public librarian certification in which they can only get 10 of their 45 hours using videos, library boards could do all 20 of their hours using the videos if they chose to. But beyond that, we have other ways that they might do it. They can discuss questions that appear at the end of the library 
board manual, which all of you have in your library. There are questions at the end of each chapter. Also at the end of each chapter, there's an evaluation that you can do. And each library board member that sends in an evaluation sheet, if they do it very well, just don't put down yes or no, but to actually give us some feedback, can get one half hour of, uh, of certification credit for that. Other ways that they can get certification credit are that they can, uh, in fact, this is, this is one example that I, that I see from a library in our state. Every library board meeting, the library board director brings four articles from library-related journals, and they discuss each of those articles for some period of time. Now, one of the things that you have to realize also is <clears throat> that any one board member could earn all 20 of those hours if he or she wished to. But it makes more sense for the board to do things together because you really double up on things. Let's suppose that the board has a half hour discussion about some topic related to uh, the future of the library or some such thing. Well, within that half hour, they can get 30 minutes times five credit for uh, their certification. It's really easy to add up these hours, so I don't think there's a really good excuse for a board not to be able to get their 20 hours within a three-year period. And move to the next slide. So if your board is not currently certified, you can go to our online application process and it's pictured here for you on the Commission website and apply. We'll ask you to provide, as you see there, up-to-date information and accurate information about who your current board members are or whose board uh, member names we should drop. And there's a link on that page also to <clears throat> figure out what it is that we have currently listed on our, uh, on, our, on our list of your board members in the next slide. Once your board is signed up, you can submit your CE credits to the Commission electronically. Now, please give us as much detail as possible. I'll just reiterate what Laura said when she was talking about the details. Give us the title or the name of the event or the article that you read or the activity that you did. Make sure that you include the date. Include how many hours or CEUs that you engaged in this activity how many board members participated. You don't necessarily have to list the board members' names because we will have those. Just tell us how many of your board were there. If there were only four board members at that meeting at which you discussed it, then indicate that. And please send in that information as close as possible to the event itself. Um, the, uh, the difficulty with waiting too long is that you forget and we don't know actually what happened and when it occurred. And trying to piece that together after the fact is very difficult. There is a statement in here somewhere that says, well, you could wait till the end of the three years to send it in, but please don't do that. Use the 90-day rule that Laura was talking about. This will help everybody. In fact, send it in just the next day, and then you'll really remember what the story is. You can go to the next one. <clears throat> Once your board has completed its 20 CEUs, it will receive a certificate. I don't believe we have a picture of the certificate, but it looks very much like the other certificates that you saw, indicating that it was certified. For those boards that are already certified, they will automatically receive their new certification at the end of the three-year period of their certification if they have completed their, at least their 20 CEUs for that period and reported that to the Commission. Now, we might like to do this, but we can't really allow for extra hours to be carried over to the next certification period. There's really no way to record that or keep a record, and it really does defeat the purpose of the library board keeping up with, with what's going on. In the next slide. Well, you can keep that here. Uh, yeah, go back. Thanks. Um, we have a link on their website, and there it is there. And as, as we said earlier, these links are in our delicious accounts. So you can find those later on. But you can check the status of your library or any other library as far as their certification goes on the Commission's website. The expiration date, you'll notice, is listed there on 
uh, on the website, and so you can check your board certification or anybody else's for that matter. And the last slide. Finally, we wanted, to, we wanted to show you a picture of Linda Jensen, who is our staff assistant within library development, because she actually is the one that you'll most often talk to about board certification. You will be sent, when you send in your uh, online board certification, I receive it and she receives it, but she is the one who records the hours that are sent in. Um, let's keep Linda smiling as she is in this picture by sending in your info on board CEUs in enough detail so that you can figure out what you're talking about and sending it in very close to the event itself. Thank you very much. I've got a few more facts and figures I brought along in case you didn't ask any questions. I was going to answer some questions for you, but let's give you an opportunity to ask some questions of Laura or me before we move on to that. Sure. Does anybody have any questions about the um, library, librarian, or board uh, certifications and accreditations? You can either... Um, you can either use your microphone if you want to or use the text chat. Um, Janet says in the text chat, how do you get to the commission slide share and delicious account? Great. And a great picture of Linda. I'm sure Linda will be happy to hear yeah. that. <laughs> I noticed she said it was a great picture of Linda, but she didn't mention the one of Richard, did she? That was, <laughs> that was pretty grim. Pretty grim. Um, our, the PowerPoint slide share and the delicious accounts are, will be on the recording when this is put up. Um, you can also find information and links to them if you can just search the commission's website. Um, on SlideShare or Delicious. We have a whole web page of all the different things that Commission is doing, um, 2.0 type stuff like this for sharing. Um, they're both on there, but the specific link for the SlideShare and the Delicious will be um, on the recording when it is posted up on the website too. Anybody have any questions? Go right ahead, we'll wait for you to type if you're trying to type something into the chat, or if you want to use your microphone, you can go ahead and do that as well. Karen, I see you have a question. I think you're going to use the text chat. Don't forget, if you do have a microphone, just hold down your control key while you're speaking, and it will uh, broadcast to everyone. Okay. Can you hear me? This is oh, Karen. Yes. Okay. There you are, Karen. Am I too loud? I don't. I'm. My sound oh, was real low yesterday. Times. Um, the basic skills program once. Do you ever repeat that again? Like, can staff use come to those sessions as a refresher for CE credit? They certainly can if they want to. Um, in fact, if you haven't done it in 15 or 20 years, it's probably a great idea. Um, I think we probably need to work on a uh, basic skills refresher course for people, too. We'll have to keep that in mind and see what we can work out with that. But yeah, done it previously. Okay, thank you. Anybody else have any questions? You either click in the text chat bo button to get that open or hold down your control key to use your microphone. Should I throw my factoids out? We stunned you into silence. <laughs> yeah. They told them everything they needed to know. <laughs> Go ahead. Maybe put them to sleep. <laughs> Here are a couple of facts for you. Of the 270, 57 of them are accredited. So there's work to be done out there, folks. Let's get those other unaccredited public libraries accredited. And I wanted to uh, just uh, tell you again about the due date to submit your annual statistics, the accredited or unaccredited, your library to get those statistics into us. If you're unaccredited, you can earn that $250 for dollars for data. If you are accredited, if you're at a higher level, you can both get your state aid, of course, state aid, and uh, I brought along the state aid formula in case you'd like to know how we figure state aid. We should be getting the state aid out in the next several weeks. We are behind. I will take almost full blame for state aid in the near future. For those of you who are interested in state aid for libraries in populations of under 8,000, the formula is $625 plus 10 cents per capita, and for library capita, we also pay a 1% incentive for those libraries that receive other public funding, let's say from the county. We pay 1% of that as an incentive. And uh, we may have to instate aid for all of our public libraries. So really how much and how we push the formula around or how we push the incentives around may be affected by, by that. This time, for example, under that are currently unaccredited because they didn't meet what's called the maintenance of effort, uh, which means that they have not uh, come up with local funding that is higher than the lowest of the three previous fiscal, three previous community is lower than the lowest of the three fiscal, uh, three previous fiscal years. Uh, they can receive a waiver if everybody in 
town was cut the same amount, but if the library was cut more than, you know, eligible for state aid. So we will be in contact with those 12 public libraries as well. That's the end of the factoids I brought along. In case there are any questions on those, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Um, we do have a request from the text chat to have like to. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like to... Um, uh, what am I trying to say? <laughs> I, I call it BASK, B-A-S-K, because ah, otherwise yes. we could call it B-S. <laughs> that. Um, yes, our the basic skills class uh, we're going to be offering this spring is um, public service that covers basic customer service, uh, reference, leaders advisory, programming, and outreach. Uh, it will be held in six places around the state. Uh, let me see if I can remember them all. Seward, Gretna, Norfolk, Kearney, North Platte, and Alliance. Um, though it'll be different times, um, different dates, but it's pretty much all in April and like the first week of May. Oh, except for the online class. We also have the online class, and that will run from April, 15th, April 15th to June 17th, I think. Um, registration opens today, uh, so you just go to the library training calendar on the Nebraska Library Commission website and sign up, um, and we'll be happy to see you there. If you have any questions, just let me know. Very convenient that it opened today. <laughs> we did, yeah. Oh, Karen, you have another question? Yes, I have a question uh, about the statistical report. I thought the due date was March 31st. That's is, I think I'm you're probably wrong. wrong. I think I messed that up. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> Let me just double check. It is March 31st. I had it in my notes, but didn't read it correctly. Sorry. You're right. Oh, thank you. I can stop having heart failure. Reprieve <laughs> from stupidity. Sorry. Uh, Deb, you have a question as well? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I do. Thank you, Krista. Uh, Richard, um, concerning uh, the statistical reports, how is there a way that we can be certain that our report has been received? For which report? That is for our statistical reports. John Felton is the one who heads that up. He's not here, but I will ask him that question and we'll pass that word on to you, okay? I appreciate it. Thank you. But you know, who was that, Karen? Um, yeah. No, that was Deb Finley. Deb Finley, okay. In Hemingford. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anything else? Any other questions? Oh, apparently John is in our other room here at the commission. He says you can email him if you want to know as well. Anyone else is curious about what's going on? John Felton here at the commission, if you've got his email. That would be J-F-E-L-D-O-N at nlc.seate.ne.us. <laughs> I've said that a couple of times. <laughs> if she can give us all the words to Misty, she can give us that, right? Yeah. <laughs> any other questions anybody has about any of the certification and accreditations that we talked about this morning? No, looks like everybody's pretty quiet. All right, anything else you guys need to I think we're done. wrap up with? All right. No. Um, if nobody has any questions now, that's fine. We can wrap it up for today. You do have the contact information from these slides um, for uh, Richard and Laura and Linda. Um, so feel free to contact any of them and if you do have any few further questions, anything that didn't get an answered or mentioned here today. Um, the session has been recorded, so we will um, have that up and out to you probably this afternoon. Oh, we're getting some applause. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, thank you for thank attending you. this morning. Um, we hope it was helpful, and I hope you'll join us next week when we will be learning about the new Nebraska Access website that just went live. Thank you. Thank you very much. We should have a bow button. <laughs> we should. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. Bye-bye.